Before we get into Brain Bites, I want to thank our sponsor Zai, boldly transforming the future of financial services with a suite of embedded products and services, enabling businesses to manage multiple payment workflows and move funds with ease. You can find Zai at hellozai.com. So next up on Brain Bites, we have the five Fs. Our guest is wondering, what five Fs? Because it's fun, fear and focus with Frederica Fabricius. And this is part of her work. She has just got a Wall Street bestseller book, her second book, because I have the leading brain here, which is her first book, which is a fabulous read. And we've done shows on that in the past. But her new book, The Brain Friendly Workplace is out in the UK and on Amazon.co UK on the 11th of December. So we're airing just before it comes out. I've had the privilege of having a pre read of the book. It's absolutely magnificent, really, really poignant for this return to work world that we're in this digital work world that we're in. But I wanted to just frame it in one way. This time of year, many people become disillusioned with their work and their jobs and wondering, is this the career for me? I'm getting a, a bit bored in it. And this is where the idea of fun, fear and focus becomes really, really w important way to frame that it's also important as a parent, as a mentor as a coach in any which way. And we're delighted to welcome today the author of The Brain Friendly Workplace and The Leading Brain, Frederica Fabricius. Welcome to the show. Hi, Irene. Thank you for having me back here for the third time. It's great to have you. And congrats on that Wall Street bestseller, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy about it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great news. It's great news. Let, let's I was telling you the difficulty of this for me anyway, to do these brain bites in short single bites. And it's so I'm just going to hand over to you and let our audience know about this beautiful framework that's fun, fear and focus. So fun, fear and focus is about having the right cocktail of neurochemicals in your brain so that you can do your best work and be happy at the same time. And when you have all three of them, the fun, the fear and the focus, you can be up to five times more productive. I think that's pretty crazy. You can just work one day and do what other people do in a week or what you do in a week when you don't have the three Fs. And, and so it's all about finding the right cocktail of neurochemicals in your brain to get into flow. And in the flow state, we can be so much more. Perfect. So let's get started with fun. When you have fun, your brain releases dopamine. And dopamine is like a real brain booster. It helps you to be more productive, to learn better, to think better. It motivates you. It helps you to be more mentally flexible. So, and it gives you an energy burst. So we all need fun at work. And if you're right now thinking about your job and you're saying, I have no fun at all, then that should be a warning sign because it's not just that you're paid to be at your job. You actually should be happy at your job because then your brain can function better. So fun is not just fun to have, it's essential. And so we need that dopamine in our brains to perform at our best. And there's several ways in which you can achieve that. And so, for example, one thing I always recommend is to really work in line with your strength and your where you're really good at, rather than always focusing on what you have to improve and what you can't do well. Think about what you're really, really good at, what you truly love, where your passion and purpose and and talent combine and and Focus on that and get better on that rather than always thinking about all the areas where you don't excel and find a line of, of work that is in line with your strength. I think that's the number one advice. And then, of course, if you already have that, then there are other ways to infuse more dopamine into your routine. You can exercise. We know that when we exercise, we get a huge dopamine burst. It can double your dopamine baseline but only if you do an exercise that you enjoy. So if you're like me and you hate yoga, then don't do yoga, you know, do something else that you truly enjoy. And so exercise, walking meetings, stand up desk, like the one I'm sitting at at the moment, things like that really make a difference in boosting your dopamine levels throughout the day. So that's really helpful. And then I would say humor. We don't laugh enough at work. You know, I think many leaders, when they see a group of people chatting and laughing in the in the office, they will think like, oh, they're not focused at their jobs or doing a bad job. No, that laughter might be a little bit of a waste of time in the moment, but afterwards you have more ideas, you have more creativity, you think better. So it's really good to think about 
keeping your dopamine levels up at work. And an easy way to remember that is the first F, the fun. Now about fear. It's important to understand that it's not about the kind of fear that scares you and keeps you up at night and uh, so you, you, your mind is racing and you can't sleep well anymore. I'm not talking about being chronically overwhelmed. You need to be what I call slightly overchallenged. So where the challenge is just a little bit too big for you. That's where you want to be. That's the sweet spot. And that's when your brain releases noradrenaline. And noradrenaline is a bit like a cold shower for your brain. You get that kick, you get that burst of energy. Like, I don't know if any of you are into ice bathing. I love doing it. And it's really, you know, not that I would know how it's like, but it's really like taking cocaine to a certain degree because you get that dopamine burst, you get that norepinephrine or noradrenaline boost, and it really, really gives you that kick. So it's important when you work to be aware of the fact that we all have different neurosignatures, so different personalities and different wirings in our brain, and that influences our optimal stress point. So it could be that Aiden here, you know, can keep up with traveling five days a week and being on the road and keynoting and podcasting and all of that, while it would exhaust me to work at that level. So it's important to understand that you don't have to keep up with other people and what they're doing. You need to understand what gets you to that point of being just slightly over challenged. And that's where you want to go. When you're a little bit nervous, when you're thinking, oh, that's an exciting challenge I want to take on. So if you're thinking about your job, if you've been in the same position for 20 years and nothing new is happening and you just do everything on autopilot, it's time to switch it up. If you can't sleep at night anymore, and if emails from your boss keep you up at 3 a.m. at night, you need to switch it down. So you need to be in that sweet spot where your brain can perform at its best. So fear is not about your boss yelling at you. Fear is about being slightly overchallenged. I think it's really important, the, the, this fear one, because I think, for example, people see cortisol and stress as a bad thing. And one of the things like I, I do cold showers as well. And it's because you get a dopamine hit because you're actually facing something that is stressful to do and but you're in control of it. And I think once I learned that and it clicked with me, that this is preparing me to be able to deal with stress that I'm not in control of by being in control of that stress, same with the gym or same with anything that's difficult like that. And when I got that, when that clicked with me, I was like, ah, this is why things feel less stressful for me that might feel stressful for other people. And I just wanted to share that because I think we often see stress as a bad thing, but it gets us out of bed in the morning. And I'd love you to share that aspect of stress as well. Exactly. So I think we can frame it like this. Short stress is good for you. Long stress is bad for you. So if you expose yourself to stressful moments that are less than 30 minutes, that will boost your immunity, that will boost your brain power, that makes you stronger. It almost, I would say, inoculates you against stress. If you have chronic, uncontrollable, long-term stress, that actually makes your brain shrink. So it's all about long versus short and controlled versus out of control. So if you expose yourself to short stressors, that's really good for your brain. So if you're somebody who deals with a lot of stress, the, the road is not to just like take bubble baths all day long and just nap and just listen to meditative music. That might over the long term even weaken you. So it's important to know to expose yourself to short stressful moments and then calm down afterwards or during it. So many people who do cold plunges, for example, work on their breathing. So when they get into the cold waters, they, they, they breathe very slowly. So, you know, this way you control the stress and the stress doesn't control you. Yeah, it's, uh, I think many high performers are doing this cold plunging thing. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that you do it. Okay, so with focus, it's important to understand that when you multitask, you make 50% more mistake and you take 50% longer to complete the task. That's setting yourself up for insanity. It's stupid. It doesn't work. It just makes us tired. 
and, and low performing. So it's important to learn to focus again. And focusing helps your brain to release acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is like a spotlight. It highlights your most important thought. It brings you to the present moment. It makes you live at the present moment and you get rid of all the distractions. And so I think we all, especially this time of the year where there's so many activities around Christmas and the holidays where you should be attending and all the presents you need to get and all that stuff, you need to focus what's truly important to me. What are my priorities in life? I have three priorities in life. And if things don't fit in, I don't do them. So never coffee with the neighbors, you know, and there's a million things I don't do because if you do too many things, you can never get anything right. And when you're at work and you have a to-do list that that's long, you know, rather than working every single step, maybe think, are there some items there that are really a waste of energy that aren't really adding value? I think we need to ask ourselves that question more often. And so it's about turning off that notification, turning off your phone on the weekend, learning to wind down in the evening without any technology, because many people have that problem that they, I don't know, they read the news before they go to bed or their, you know, their colleagues go interrupt them during some deep thinking time. So I think it's important to understand that your brain can't go into flow when you're distracted, interrupted, by internal or external distractions. So it's important to find ways to really be single-minded. Your brain needs silence and solitude to come up with innovative ideas, which is the core of your podcast, I would say, innovation. So when you're constantly chatting and people are constantly talking to you, you won't have great big ideas. So it's all about, you know, finding the right level of fun, finding just the right level of fear that's good for you, not too big, not too little, just right. And then being a bit more single-minded, prioritized, focused on what's truly important. And when all three things come together, you have the dopamine, the noradrenaline, the acetylcholine, and you get into the flow state and everything becomes joyful and you are truly able to make great achievements. And if your job doesn't feel like this, it should. I would encourage you to either you know, switch to a different job, make your changes to your work day. Um, think about what can I do less? What can I do more of in order to get into that flow state more often? Beautiful, Frederica. And where can people find out more? You do keynotes, you are a seriously accomplished virtual speaker. I've seen your work that you do. It's absolutely fantastic. Where can people find out more about those and you and your books, etc.? I would say the first place is my website, FrederikeFabricius.com, where I have a newsletter, I have information about my keynotes, then I think, you know, there's my book. I do have my book, The Brain Friendly Workplace. That's also, there's also a chapter on fun, fun, focus. And yeah, I only do two things, writing books and keynotes. So there's nothing else. Beautiful. And I'm going to point here because I'm going to put a picture of your book here while it's on the way because it's released in the UK on amazon.co.uk on the 11th of December. It's always great to talk to you. So delighted to get you. And for those of you interested in this topic, the book is fantastic. And we're going to do a deep dive in the book in the new year. I'm absolutely looking forward to that. And I hope this was helpful for those people who are in that place of maybe a little bit of boredom, maybe a little bit of fear, and understand that it's the sweet spot that is the place to be. Our guest today is Frederica Fubitius, author of The Brain Friendly Workplace and her former book, The Leading Brain. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Aidan. Thanks to our sponsor, Zai, boldly transforming the future of financial services with a suite of embedded products and services, enabling businesses to manage multiple payment workflows and move funds with ease. You can find Zai at hellozai.com. See you soon.